In this video, I am going over, step by step, almost word for word, this book, Indie Comic Empire, written by yours truly, Lord Max Hoven. <laughs> it goes over all kinds of detailed stuff from advertising, using social media, pitching artists, SEO, comic conventions, the entire steps that you need to take in order to profit from comic books. That's what I'm going over today, chapter by chapter. It's going to be a long one. Stay tuned. Today's video is brought to you by Collabor. Come support their fundraiser. It's an online platform, a new online platform, that promises to bridge the gap between creatives and the comic book industry. It's used to connect artists and writers and ensure all artists and writers can easily either find vetted talent and or find jobs with credible creators and publishers. So why are they launching a campaign? Well, they need funds for further platform development. Although it is currently in development, they'll need some extra funds for advanced features. They also need funds for marketing and outreach. Some of the funds will be dedicated to bringing in new customers as they continue to grow. What will you get for supporting the campaign? Well, you'll get to vote on and request new features. You'll get discounts and promo codes, uh, behind the scenes access to the development. You'll get early access and you'll get to use the platform for free for the first three months of Collabor's launch or for up to five transactions. You also get to speak directly with the developers personally. Once again, that's Collabor, C-O-L-L-A-B-R. Please kick, click the link in the description to support this new endeavor. So today, I'm going over the entire, kind of a run-through of my entire book, Indie Comic Empire, Making and Marketing Comic Books Step-by-Step. Step. So it's going to be kind of a long one, but like I'm not going to be going over it word for word. I just want to show everybody what exactly is it that you learn when you get this book like why w what is it <laughs> so i'm gonna go through it so the table of contents i start off with a prologue and an introduction i then go over basically pre-production all the way through post launch um the first and longest chapter so not all these chapters are even the first chapter has a bunch in it that's because i wrote it in order of what you should be doing and where you should be spending your time and most of your time when creating comic books at least from the writer's perspective or the uh investor or whatever you want to call it, it on the front end the producer the creator um, of the ip you are spending most of your time doing these things in pre-production and then whenever it actually comes to production now it's from a marketing perspective most of this is all about not how to write necessarily step by step of what makes a good book although parts of that are in there i'm basically going at it from what do you need to do step by step in order to ensure on the back end when everything's done and you actually hit launch and you want people to buy it did you take all the proper steps to ensure that marketing wise you will get your book in front of as many eyeballs as possible all right so uh that starts with pre-production i then go into production i then go into post-production pre-launch and then the actual launch is a little chapter because that's basically just one day to one or few weeks and then chapter five is post-launch and then i add this bonus chapter profiting for comics which is also the free mini ebook that i give to people that sign up for my email list along with a lot of other free material for those of you who sign up for my email list the the link is in the description or if you just go to hovencrow.com you can access that i give mini ebooks i give away a list of literally a hundred something publishers uh, and so on. So I'm not going to read the prologue. This is basically just me saying that uh, this book is, means a lot to me, I think, and that uh, you know it's also a work in progress, and I plan to update it over the years as I learn more. Um, I then go into sort of the key theme of my book, which is, if you don't have competitive advantage, don't compete, which is a quote from Jack Welch. Um, and essentially what I'm saying here is you need to figure out what it is from your perspective that makes you stand out. Because if you don't have some kind of hook or uh, extreme skill, you're not going to be able to stand out from the crowd in this business. Because so many people are making comic books 
um, the the barrier to entry is essentially zero. <clears throat> um, so you have to really have a lot of talent, a unique hook, a unique take, um, a partnership with somebody that has extreme talent or something in order for you to uh, uh, stand out. And if you don't have any of those, <laughs> that's the point of this book is I give you, well, how do you sort of create your own – how do you become your own – uh, how, how do you create your own competitive advantage? Uh, and my argument is is with a good marketing plan and knowing your audience and ha and narrowing down your niche to a very uh, select genre um, and then trying to slowly build your way up, becoming the best that you can within a small niche and then expanding that out is kind of the whole premise of the book in a way. So chapter one, pre-production, what to do before you even begin production of the comic. Um, and my argument very first there is that you must see that your comic is not just a comic. It is the first stepping stone of a multi-medium empire of IP. So as I explain here, your comic book can be retold as a novel, a video game, a tabletop game, a film, a TV series, and so on. Because what you'll learn once you get into this game is that those that are really making tip top dollar and hitting international phenomenon have created stories that are recognizable across different mediums and can be told as ongoing. And they have characters that are iconic, um, literally how they look, how they talk. Uh, and, and things like that and that your goal is to essentially be creating something that's not just a standalone little thing although there's nothing wrong with that but if you want a career or something to stand alone what you're essentially doing is you're trying to create an empire based upon your IP and you must treat your stories as a business because ultimately that's what they are once you start selling them uh, and you want to actually profit from your stories uh, you need to start to see them that way because if you don't, somebody else will. Um, I then go on and I then further delve into what does that mean. I then basically, uh, a lot of these, I have everything is broken down into sort of sub chapters or almost like articles within each chapter that elaborate upon a certain subject that I summarize in the first like couple of paragraphs of a chapter. The, the first one I have understanding your audience. Because the first thing that you're going to do is if you have a story in your head or even not a full story but just some kind of idea is try to determine who who is, who is it that's reading it. A lot of times it's somebody like you, whatever your interest. So I explain a very common, often known amongst anybody that's into marketing or in entertainment at all of the concept of an avatar. And the avatar is basically literally a person that you design or invent that – is who you're trying to sell your book to and you the whole point of the avatar is what you're doing is you're breaking down their demographics and their psychographics which i explain later it's basically their demographics is things like where they live what's their age where do they go to school uh how many friends do they have and their psychographics are things like what are their interests um you know, what kind of movies do they watch? What other books do they read? What subcultures they are part of? Are they a skateboarder? Do they do cosplay? Uh, what kind of anime do they watch? And things like that. Uh, and these are the specific things that you want to figure out. And as we go through, I explain that the main things you're trying to figure out are similar IP, which is something that's in the same genre, a similar genre uh, as yours that's of a similar plot and so on. I then break down that once you create your avatar, you'll then learn that your audience is not just your avatar because in comics, your audience is more than just a reader. Uh, it's your, I break it down, I think, into four different things. Your main audience is either your readers, people that read comics just to, to, for entertainment. These are truly what you think you're writing for. But you'll find out that beyond the people that read it for the story, there's what we call commentators. These are people that aren't just reading it for the story. They're reading it in order to review your story or they're, they're reading your stuff just because you're a part of their uh, uh, team or culture. And that would be like other comic creators that they aren't necessarily just reading it because they heard it's a good story and they like – you know science fiction books or something like that they're reading it because they heard oh here's this new guy he's a new comic creator i heard it's good um then we also have other creators 
uh, as another category. So those are separate from commentators because commentators, in, in my, the way I break it down, is commentators are truly like people that their job is to review and write about comics. Um, or they just generally, if it's not their job, it's just a, a hobby that they love to do. They're on social media, always talking about comics. Uh, or they're truly like a platform or a website or a blog that focuses on reviewing comics. Creators, you're also writing for other creators in order to sort of f appease their tastes in a way. And finally, the final category that I talk about is comic shops and speculators. And comic shops and speculators are literally the owners of comic shops or the employees of comic shops and speculators are people that specifically buy books to just buy and sell as a collectible or as something that they're investing in uh, and they are not necessarily reading it for the story but as I explain here a lot of these people cross mingle so uh, comic shops and speculators also are readers Creators are also readers and commentators, so these can blend, but the whole point of this chapter is to explain that it is important to understand that you're not just writing a book and marketing for someone that just wants to read it for its entertainment value. There's other people involved in this whole process that you need to impress, and there's certain ways to go about it in order to appeal to each one of those different forms of audience. Whenever it comes to the marketing, whenever you actually market the book, you need to you know know which one of your avatars that you're targeting and it that'll change how you market the books i then go into the rule of magnitude now the rule of magnitude i talk about in a lot of videos it's it's one of the things that i i may have basically coined it's one of the key things that i go over in all my courses and everything and the whole point of what the rule of magnitude is is that you're taking uh pools uh, in different levels of magnitude so from 0 to 1 to 10 10 to 100 100 to 1000 and 1000 to 10000 you use each pool of zeros to essentially gain the attention of the bigger pool so it's like i was saying at the very beginning is if you can capture the attention of the first wave the first pool of 10 you can then by getting all those 10 people involved and shaking and talking about it online and person in the real world that can gather the attention of a hundred people and if a hundred people are then also talking and hyping and and, and encouraged to tell other people to the next wave up it then gets the attention of the pool of a thousand people and if you can shake and bake the thousand people that'll bring the attention of ten thousand and because basically each pool, no one of a, the biggest, broadest group. So if the biggest and broadest group is, you know, let's just say that's like people that are into one big, broad genre like horror, you're not going to be able to break through the noise of everybody that's into horror unless you've broken through the noise of each lesser group that then bursts that bubble and spills into the greater pool. We all, you know, we use certain things to capture our attention we just follow you know a certain facebook group or we will follow a certain instagram page and that's where we get our information so in order to you know break through that noise you have to be able to get on to the platforms that people are watching that are of those broader groups where there's a whole lot thousands of people that are paying attention to that and then i go through through all this chapter of basically what each one of those groups are and then later, throughout the whole rest of the book, this is why it's the very beginning, is the whole point is basically once you understand this rule of magnitude, how do you get to the top of each pool? And how do you break through and, and spill into those other ones? And those are the steps that we're taking. I then explain the logistics and business of story. I go over how length is important for your book uh, for various reasons. I then go over... Um, why story structure is important um, and by story structure I use examples like the anatomy of story everybody anybody that's a writer often will know save the cat or just in general the hero's journey we even learn about this a little bit in school and the importance of understanding that structure I then go into sort of a concept I don't see many people talking about but but that's literally the brain chemistry involved whenever we read stories or watch movies and and things like that and how it releases serotonin and dopamine 
and what is it that we actually do in the writing of stories that actually releases those chemicals that make stories so addictive to people. Um, and I explain how it's similar to literally the act of taking certain drugs. I then write a whole chapter on how to, to actually write a hit. Now, uh, not to sound uh, nar narcissistic or whatever, um, I use the examples of people that are inarguably hit writers like Alan Moore and Hirohiko Araki. I'm not exactly sure how to uh, pronounce his name but the creator of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And I quote their articles and books, um, and uh, not directly, but I summarize key takeaways from what they've done, how I've used those same things to, to reach what I call mainstream appeal, and, and what it takes to actually you know, make something a, a, a huge success rather than just something that is sort of out there and then ignored. Like, what do you actually need to go, do story-wise, uh, structure-wise? And uh, I explain that. It needs to be uh, easily ongoing. The characteristics of the characters must be very easily definable, make them unique, iconic, essentially. Uh, I go into more detail on that later whenever I talk about character. Uh, what makes a story high concept? What makes a story marketable? Uh, uniqueness and the importance of that. I then go into whenever it comes to specifically re writing comic series um, and not just a graphic novel but how important the first issue is because that's what people judge you on for the rest of your career <laughs> uh, is basically how good was that first issue and often not just that but how good is the cover and how good is the first page um, and so on and not only just on how you're remembered and your credibility, but also just how important that is monetarily uh, and how if you don't have a really strong launch for your first issue, it, you often will not find profitability because uh, uh, because of speculators in this space, your, your sales for the later issues drop by a lot. So if you have to have an ultra big front end um, in order to get a an audience that will maintain high. So if you want 5,000 regular readers, you want at least three times that uh, for your launch. Uh, um, so I then go use examples for whenever it actually like genre and the importance of sub-genre sub because when you actually post things onto different platforms from digitally or whatever or just how people can search it. This I, go, I talk a lot about SEO or search engine op optimization later throughout the book uh, and that you need to be able to categorize the genre of your story amongst multiple different things. You need to have other um, popular IP that you can compare your story to. Um, I then talk about the most profitable genres um, and why they are the most profitable genres. Um, and then I go into how to actually choose an artist and how w what actually you're doing whenever you're choosing an artist and why certain artists are better and how you can partner up to where you don't have to pay someone up front. Um, and how important it is to actually pay people on time and all the little nitty-gritty details of actually partnering with another partner because this is one of the most important aspects of creating a book. This is like finding the director for your movie, finding the star for your movie. When it comes to creating IP, finding the right talent to work with is probably the most important decision you will make. Um, so... I go into all these things that you need to think about when you go about uh, creating that relationship or fostering a, a, a past relationship and how to find an artist that's um, worth it both for, their, for your own budget and worth it in the long run for both par parties. Uh, I think breakdown, uh, as you'll see in many videos I did in the very early of my YouTube career, so to speak, uh, on like what is how much money can you really make with indie comics or at least create your own comics I break down sort of how I uh, categorize how big the industry is and the whole point of this chapter it's not really the point but it's just what you discover upon learning this is this backwards pyramid where 60% uh, of what people that read comics so your entire market doesn't even read indie comics <laughs> 
and or at least the majority of what they're reading is not indie comics and then once you finally get into independent comics they're just so small in comparison to the entire comics industry as a whole and by the time you finally get down to the self-published independents or even small press independent comics you're only looking at literally less than two percent of the overall market share so if a billion people are reading comics you know you can only expect two percent of them to actually um read your comic if that that's best case scenario that's the hits uh that's rough numbers uh, so comic book revenue basics, I then go over like what you can actually do and expect of how much money are you actually going to be able to make when you finally finish the comic series. Uh, I literally break it down to like cost per issue for printing, how much you make back, uh, per issue, depending on the print run size and all that. And uh, I, there's plenty of videos on this as well. I'll make an updated version cause prices have increased, Every year, I swear, whenever I started writing these things and doing my own comics, you know, you could still find books that were less than four dollars, and now I feel like the average is five, even, even in the comic stores. Uh, I then further break down your budget uh, into even more details of not just for your like uh, the comic itself, but ultimately revenue, uh, uh, is, as if you're crowdfunding and things like that, if you're actually paying for printing yourself and going to conventions and travel costs and all that as like, as if this is your career, what can you expect to be spending each year? If your whole job is just, if this is your job is a comic creator, what's that going to look like? Uh, if that's like your business, I break that down. I then go into the differences between publishing through the traditional publishers and self-publishing. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details there on like what the actual differences are because that's a whole video in itself. I then go further into how to actually the different steps to take to earn different revenue for your book, not just for your book, uh, but also through other methods of creating merchandise, selling your uh, IP to uh production companies and film studios uh and and earning money through conventions and events and so on and that uh finishes chapter one chapter two of the actual production is where i start to get into the online stuff the step-by-step step-by-step step social media growing your audience that's where i get into that in chapter two so i start off with the importance of writing your title for two key things phonetically like how it literally sounds uh does it have hard consonants is it more flowy and romantic and then the seo like how is your title easily searchable online people seem to just ignore that fact but it's super important for you to be able to be findable when someone searches your book online most of us don't actually like find things they're either given to us by word of mouth so when someone says did you read blah 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 you have to be able to cite you know if later after you're done hanging out with that person you go home and you look it up and you type in blah 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 if it's not on the first or second page of google you're it's done you're ignored to the end if you don't write blah 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 comic and it doesn't pop up if not on the first page even at the very top like you want it at the top of the first page. It, the, statistically, anything that's not on the first, like the top five of a Google page, never even gets seen. It's something like ninety-nine percent of the links that we click on through Google search and other search engines. It's all the top five links, and it's like you just drastically. If you're on the second page, you know, it's hardly anybody's seeing you. And if you're beyond that, you, good luck. You you might not ever get seen. It's literally like, yeah, 99% of the market share is on the first page of Google or something like that. So I go into the importance of that. So being able to be findable, not just like your the title of the book, but how you title everything associated with your book. And whenever you actually start to go and market, like I say, in production, when you start trying to build your audience and you, and you have the, you know your IP that you're trying to get out there, uh, what makes a, a good title and what and, and you know titles for your Kickstarter page or whatever and I break into how to do that and why all that works I then explain essentially the entire breakdown of how SEO works from an author or a comic creator or an artist perspective and how 
what you're doing online literally the step-by-step physically like what's on your social media website the actual words that you use and how links work and how backlinks work and all that and uh, I break into how to do that step by step of how everything should link to your own website and how that's key because the website's something you control and that whenever things change and your book's publisher changes and uh, all these things because people forget that over time you know you, you uh, you have you know issue one comes out on this month issue two the next month and those links that are posted on other websites and social media pages die and just are non-existent and whenever that happens they can't link back to your page or people can't find what you're trying to do so as long as everything stays updated on your website every backlink that then it feeds to that one it all just helps build the momentum of the thing that you're trying to currently promote and everything you've done in the past helps just build the credibility of your website up uh, and I, I, I go into all the details of that I then go into the phonetics and how like the importance of how basically words and how we speak is acts to our brains the the exact same way as how we uh, translate music in our brains essentially um, and the importance of uh, literally how a word sounds in our title and that that shouldn't just be ignored uh, whenever you're coming up with your title of how how it actually sounds whenever you speak it um, I then break into what makes a good log line what makes a good synopsis and how to write them I then explain the importance of having different covers and that the, you're writing you're, it's just like your audience that you're making different covers for different portions of your audience. Uh, I explain planning uh, your actual content that you're going to post or what we might call copy. So this is actually like the images, the videos, the articles, the podcasts that you're going to post and create. And sort of my other key thing that I go over, other than the rule of magnitude that I go over multiple times in sort of different angles to look at it, is that what you're doing to build momentum online is also in the same form of little bit get growing grower to bigger pools to spill in the next. It's the same with time. So it's kind of you're combining uh, the rule of magnitude is for size and how big you're trying to reach of of people and the this rule of actually how you're posting and marketing is by the rule of time and how you need to do something little every day something a little bit bigger every week even bigger every month and your big mega thing that you do which is essentially reach uh, releasing a entire comic book or a movie or something like that needs to happen every quarter or every year um, and that every little thing is building the momentum to the bigger thing. Uh, I then, uh, in the updated version of the book that I'm working on, I relate how that is the same thing as everybody talks about in marketing of virtually every other business of what we call high ticket sales. Or that essentially what I talk about later in the book of funnels is that everything is sort of funneling to one big thing. These are just a little thing to, to nibble, to gather people's attention. Once they have, once you have their attention, it's sort of how do I keep them in and draw them to something bigger? How do I get them to become a subscriber every month? And what's the big thing I really want them to have? That's the big expensive thing that I really want them to buy. And, you know, in, in high ticket, that's when people are like, uh, uh, you know, actually getting a client that pays thousands of dollars for some kind of high skilled service. Or in the case of us, it's how do we get them to actually buy your book or become uh, a subscriber to your Patreon or something like that to where they become a loyal fan for life. Um, that's what all this goes into of the actual physical stuff that you need to create in order to slowly build momentum online. Uh, and it, the whole point that I prove with this is that you don't need to have a whole huge following on your Instagram page or your YouTube or whatever in order to follow these trends and make them work for you as an author or as a creator. As long as you're just doing a little bit, you know, every day, week, month, whatever, and following the same plan, the trends, uh, it slowly builds over time. And the only thing that really changes that is the quality of the content you create. Because as soon as you create something that's viral, all of a sudden the speed in which this whole process works it you know it exponentially increases so it goes from if you do this step by step every 
you know, week, month, year, after, you know, five, ten years, you're going to have a pretty dedicated following that will allow you to actually make this a career full time. If you have a huge hit or some content that goes viral like YouTube videos or a podcast, all of a sudden it changes the trajectory to where now that what used to, you know, build a following in five to ten years might happen in one to three and I do explain in the beginning of this of how to actually create hits and how to actually sort of create virality, at least in a small scale in the comes of reading in the in the in the concept of for readers and comic books and stuff, you know, going low key viral in that space, not necessarily how to go viral online. I wish I could figure that one. Actually, you know, there are steps I could take to do that. It's essentially the same process. It just takes a lot of work, guys. That's why it's a whole book. Trying to go through all these step-by-steps is a chore. You literally, as I go, this is now utilizing social media, I, what I just explained there. That it's the same thing except for I explain it from the other perspective of going backwards. Um, where basically you need to think about everything a year in advance. Because like I was saying, if you're going to do something every day, week, month, quarter, year that actually builds momentum to the big thing, well, you better know what that big thing is before you start trying to create the little stuff that leads nowhere. The whole point of this is to sort of know that everything you're doing leads to something bigger and that it's not just one – you don't want what you do to sort of be a waste of time. There needs to be a greater goal that you're leading towards and that everything you do and everything you post will link to that – to something that people either buy or see that builds momentum or can easily share your content or whatever. Um, and then I explained that uh, how to do that is you need to have a lot of different things that you're doing and not just creating books. Uh, you're also creating content of many different forms and creating merch and all this stuff. Like I said, it's a chore. Finally, we're to the launch. Uh, so this I go over how to actually – the steps you need to take if you're either crowdfunding or whenever you're crowdfunding, you know, you usually have a campaign that is – uh, three to four weeks long. I've seen some people that do it for two. Um, and each one of those weeks, you're doing different things to, to build momentum until the final day. And you're doing a certain things you have to do actually on the day of launch. But aside from crowdfunding, if you're going through the direct market, then you go through the same process of what we call pre-sales. So you're trying to do the same thing to build momentum uh, during uh, pre-order phase, and then whenever your book actually launches, you're, you have to do the same methods as whenever your Kickstarter or Indiegogo launches, as whenever your book goes live in shops to make sure that everybody's buying it on the day one so that it builds momentum and makes the shops think that there's like a really high demand, which then makes them order more and so on. And then that can continue the momentum to where it's like this back and forth wave of like oh tons of people want this oh did tons of people were buying it oh i should buy it too and now it's like oh even more people bought it so it's a huge wave and if people like it you get this huge exponential increase that's the whole point of this uh yeah so uh, i skipped ahead i then actually the whole a big thing that this is probably the most valuable piece to uh the book is what you'll if you ever take courses especially my course or any other course on sort of like making money with stuff online or you know any kind of passive income kind of thing is understanding sales fu sales funnels and you see them all the time you see it that's probably why you're reading this now you do something you either create an ad you create a video that then leads people to your website where they can sign up for your email list from your email list they then get automated emails that exp that gives you them free stuff that or will lead them to, you know, the second thing on your funnel, which is, you know, uh, joining something else, your Patreon, uh, ordering something else, um, and then eventually it's it sort of goes down the line of this funnel to where ultimately people are buying your books, watching your videos, they're paying attention to emails for new announcements, they're taking advantage of the deals that you're posting because people that are part of the email list, you can give things for discounts and you can shout people out and you can involve them in your stories and you, you know it's it's sort of this whole back and forth of how you actually uh, keep in contact with your fan base and and help grow it as well and it's the same methods that everyone uses um, I mean obviously not everyone but the majority of people that are uh, you know th this process works and you know it's it's giving something away for free 
Um, in our case, it's uh, either digital ash cans or previews of your book. Um, you then give them for doing that access to your email list where you then you know can give them the next thing where it's like an exclusive comic book and then you lead them further down the funnel to where they actually get a full comic series and ultimately a trade paperback and then ultimately they become a, a monthly not just subscriber to your newsletter but to every content that you create so uh, that could be a mystery box uh, a lifetime access to all your comics so like people might become members for you know 10 20 dollars a month to get access to everything you do if you're posting stuff so often especially if you're writing like uh novellas and novels and 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 stuff in addition to your comics that people want to read that's the whole point is for you to get basically regular steady income from your fan base uh as if you as a creator is a business that's the whole point of all this is if you are a creator that just regularly creates and you have a uh, a, a base of a, an audience your customers uh that monthly or even not daily want to access to your stuff well you how do you get paid for that on a regular basis what are the steps you need to take that's the whole point of the sales funnel that's what all this chapter is about how to build it and so on i then go into where facebook groups are involved and the whole importance of facebook groups and how they can be used to find audiences for free and not pay for ads I then go into the importance of uh, launching a either virtual party or a physical party in your hometown to build momentum. It's important to have your stuff both in the virtual digital landscape but also in the real physical world. You want stuff in both realms, so to speak. It needs to be real. Your legacy continues in the physical world, not just the digital. Um, so the I then go into actual like what to do in the physical world. This is going to interviews and doing signings at bookstores and comic shops and comic cons. I go further into that in this next chapter, chapter five, which is after your book launches, either you've gone through the campaign or you've gone through the you know first cup. You know if you're if you have a comic series that's four or five issues like i talk about in this book the kind of importance of not overwriting and writing something that's 15 plus issues long or writing it too short if it's only one or two uh is that the whole point of this is to keep people continuously coming to you um without breaking your wallet or whatever um but once your book releases into comic book shops and it's you know issue one, two, three, four, and five are out, and now you're waiting, and now the trade's the only thing. What do you do after the launch? Um, so that's where I talk about for every issue that actually comes out in your series through the direct market or even through Kickstarter, you should be posting uh, on your website, posting on your email list, posting on social media. The importance of cross collaboration. So that means literally. Uh, partnering with other creators and i uh, talk about kind of how that goes about the importance of creating a trailer like a video an actual sort of animation of some sort of your comic series uh, automating social media to where you don't actually have to get on and try to post yourself you can get platforms and software that will sort of post for you you can front load the work and it just slowly uh schedules out all the sort of things that you want to say to people i then explain that you should also have a physical party for when the trade releases so you kind of get a second wave so in order to not let it die down that when you finally get another reason to, to talk about your book i then go into the whole aspect that's similar for musicians and filmmakers and and it's called going on tour whenever you're a filmmaker that is whenever you do film markets or film festivals and whenever you're a musician this is whenever you create an album and then you go travel the country or the world uh, actually performing for comic creators when you go on tour after you've created a book what you do is you go on circuits of anime cons horror cons comic cons uh independent author uh events uh all kinds of things there's uh, farmers markets locally and sort of art fairs and all kinds of things where people see you not just as a comic book writer or artist they see you as a local business a creator uh, they see you as a part of the community of whatever you're a part of either you're a horror writer or a horror artist and they want to see you at the horror conventions 
uh, you might be, whatever it is. I go into all kinds of specific details of the kinds of events that you'd want to join and the importance of going to certain ones and the importance of which ones to go to. You don't want to go to something that's really expensive if you don't, uh, if you don't think you can actually uh, withstand the crowd in a sense, if you don't have enough products to actually showcase, it's not worth paying $750 for a table unless you can think you can make $750 back. Uh, I, you know, it, it, it's important of not, you know, you have to take into account travel expensive, air, airlines, hotels. So if you're going to a big convention or traveling to one, you better have a lot of products that you know you're going to be able to sell in order to make that worth it. I talk about having a small circuit, so that's like things that are close to home within driving distance. Um, I explain sort of this little steps that you can take. I also have other little mini ebooks that go into this further of how you can profit from these comic conventions and so on. Uh, I then go into further into content creation that you need to be creating either YouTube videos or other kinds of things that are online aside from writing and or writing your books and creating art that you need to do and release regularly in order to keep momentum going for your book. And finally, I give my own little personal conclusion and the bonus chapter, which further delves into the size of the industry and how to actually, in really short understandings of like how do you make the money back on your comic book or your graphic novel and then how do you actually profit once you make the money back and that's where i go into that's where you're building an empire that's where you have all these other different forms of revenue to 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 make money off of this stuff that's it's you know that's not just direct to consumer sales you also have exclusive uh covers that you're releasing small print runs that you can sell for more than retail auctions signed issues going to comic conventions and getting sales from that uh selling merchandise uh optioning getting your uh basically selling your book to production companies and studios uh or at least the rights to for media uh and things like that and then i, I wrap it up with just like uh my whole the links to all my stuff so indiecomicempire.com that's technically still being worked on right now uh and, and then my youtube channel indie comic empire the lord max hoven and hoven crow entertainment which is all my other social media and finally my web design partner which is gonotable.com or notable press which is essentially a web design platform that creates templates that are available for sale or for subscriptions that are specifically designed for authors for artists for filmmakers for musicians for creators in general and they're designed to do exactly as all the stuff i talk about be able to regularly post for easy be able to stream stuff be able to get act as patreon to where you get people to subscribe monthly to your uh, to your content and to your newsletters newsletters and creating an email list and and all that is available in these themes at notable press and go notable.com and that is the book and i encourage everybody to buy it it is for sale digitally on my website hovengrow.com it's also available uh in print on amazon if you go to amazon.com and look up indie comic empire it pops up to the top Written by myself, written at, uh, as Max Hoven. And uh, if anybody has any other questions about any of this stuff, uh, or actually wants to work with me directly or collaborate, or is wanting to, you know, uh, book my services through my parent, my, my, the, the big company I have, Hoven Crow Entertainment, where I produce movies and stuff like that, it's all available at hovencrow.com. And that's it, everybody. Thanks a lot.